Hey everybody, this is Kevin Quigley here. And I just ate a big uh, bunch of pistachios. So I'm gonna do a quick video here because that's what you do after you eat some nuts. Um, we're looking at getting another big game night together. And in particular, the game we're looking to play is Blood on the Clock Tower. All right, in this giant box, which I've had for a few months now, uh, and in fact, got it out to play around my birthday in mid-November. We had eight people jump in, um, and we liked the game so much that we played it three times in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Um, it's really cool. So, okay, let's talk about the game quickly. I want to keep this short. It's a social deduction game. So what that means is it's games where um, people are handed sort of random roles, like you might be the spy. And you might be the bad guy, right? You're the demon or the werewolf. Werewolf is the most famous social deduction game. And um, I'm not a fan of werewolf. I actually don't like it. But there's a couple of other social deduction games that I like a lot. So if werewolf turns you off, don't worry. If werewolf is one of your um, go-to games, you're probably going to like this one as well. So in the beginning of the, uh, or what comes in the box are um, is a massive amount of stuff. It's got three different versions of the game in the box, and it plays up to 25 people. I think if we can get like 10, 12, um, we'll have a great game. Even with the eight that we learned with, still good. Um, so check down below, there's a poll for uh, which day coming up on this, uh, on next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, Friday or Saturday night, if you want to play, which day might work for you. Uh, okay, so they'll, um, there are three different kinds of games in the box, and I think I know which one we'll play, but I might look at one of the new ones too, uh, so we can all learn it and get it running. And then around the table goes a little purple bag, and you will draw into the... All right, so let's go back. Here I am, right? So there's three different versions of the game in the box, and then they've published more as well. You can get more. So the one that we'll likely play is Trouble Brewing, but there's two others that I'll take a look at. And inside of this Trouble Brewing box, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't exist in the other versions of the game. We've got a bunch of tokens, and each of the large uh, tokens, I'm going to hold things so they don't spill out, um, are one of the roles that you might get. There is a, a good guy team, the blue tokens, and the bad guy team, the red tokens. Um, and this is about figuring out, so for the if you happen to get a blue one, um, and the little purple bag will go around. Uh, here it goes. You'll get this little purple bag. You'll reach inside of it. And then you'll pull one out at random, and it turns out that I am the washerwoman. Will it focus on that? I'll put it over there, maybe? Ah, doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm the washerwoman, and according to that, with my glasses on, I start the game knowing that one of two players is a particular type of townsfolk, and it could be anyone. There is a third type of player, for, and for this I'll facilitate, um, who sort of runs the game. Um, gets things, every, everything set up and makes sure that all the modes and things are happening, whether it's nighttime or dark time, there's two different um, moments of play. And during the daytimes in particular, you just talk to each other. Now in a game like this, you're not required to tell the truth. In fact, you might be required to lie in game terms, right? So if you're one of the, the, if you're on the bad team, if you're on the red team, your goal is to stay hidden. And each different version of the game, I bet, has a different um, goal for the, for the bad team. But um, things like stay undiscovered until you manage to knock off everybody in the town except for one person, something like that, could be. And then for the blue team, um, there are times when you actually want to stay concealed and hidden because if the red team figures out who you are, you may be somebody that they could take out and just win the game, right? So there's lots of ways to do that. Oh, and also, then we switch over to the night phase. The night phase is where 
people's secret roles actually activate. So some people get information during the night um, when everyone has their eyes closed and no one gets to talk, right? Uh, although the test games that we did in November, people were talking a lot during the night phase. And it was really funny. So as the, the game runner, I just let it go because uh, it was super entertaining and it wasn't hurting, hurting anything in the game. Anyway, um, if the townsfolk, the people on the blue team, manage to figure out who at least one of the red team is, uh, and then they can take them out because they actually can um, sort of try and execute uh, somebody on that team each morning, then they might win, right? So that's the basic way the, the game goes, but figuring out what kind of information you might be getting and sometimes information that you're getting might be false, right? So lots of talking going on, lots of figuring things out. Um, man, it really works. It's really, really fun. So if you're interested in Blood on the Clock Tower, we're looking at playing not this weekend, but the weekend after on either, I don't have the dates in my head right now, um, on either Friday or Saturday evening. Check the poll down below. It was a post that I put up maybe a day or three ago. Um, take a look at that and um, off we go. Okay, cool. Thanks. Ciao.